without further ado, I will get this started. All right, well, welcome and thank you everybody for showing up on this Saturday. Um, today we have our sixth installment of the Game Dev Chat series and today we will be having Eli talking about uh, Unreal Engine tips and particle effects. So without further ado, Eli, if you'd like to uh, share yeah. your screen and take over. Yeah, um, do. You guys can see that all right? Yep, we can see it awesome. just fine. Okay. But yeah, my name's Eli, my pronouns are they, them, and I'll be showing you guys particle systems in Unreal Engine. I'm using four because I have not opened five yet. Um, so keep that in mind while you're like watching. But what are particle systems? There's like two different systems within Unreal. We'll be using Cascade, but do know that I don't think Cascade is supported in Unreal 5 and they're not really doing much more support for it going forward. They're shifting to Niagara, but I'm focusing on Cascade because I feel like it's a little bit more approachable and there's like twice as many tutorials for it. But um, Cascade is a tool for creating modular particle effects using emitters in the Unreal Engine. And um, there's a lot of overlap with how Cascade and Niagara works. So if you learn Cascade first, you can still carry that over into Niagara. But we're just gonna go into breaking it down. Um, it's really important to break down your systems the, like the same way that you would a prop. You know, it just kind of makes it easier. And particle systems are run on things called uh, emitters. So that would be like, I'll show you guys in the breakdown in the next one, but like there would be one, two, three, four, five emitters in this to create the different, um, what would be like models, you know, like for the dagger, you guys had the handle, the hilts, the, the wraps, it's like the same thing, but instead of objects, it's emitters. Um, but once you figure out how many you need, then you're gonna think about the movement and the action of those systems. So approaching it, you're gonna wanna look for a reference. Um, browsing the Unreal Store is really beneficial because it shows you what people have already made in the engine and what you might be able to recreate. Um, and then also looking at games that you like and thinking about how you might break stuff down for that. I, when I play Breath of the Wild, that is like the number one thing I'm doing every single time I get near a shrine, I'm like, is that runoff of material? Is that a system? There's a mesh in there, like always working. But um, yeah, number two, break it down. Uh, what particle emitters do you need? Like, and what do they do? Um, there's a quote from like Prismatica Dev that says like particle systems are 50% material and 50% like system math. Um, so figuring out the assets you need is important. The third step is just to go ahead and try to make it. Um, that's at least my approach. You're gonna fall pretty flat a few times in the first like two to three passes, but it's important to get stuff down so you can edit it instead of like trying to make it perfect the first time, which leads into the fourth step of just like polishing times infinity. It's a ridiculous amount of going in and changing like numbers on the parameters by like fives to see to how to get it to work right. So this is like a visual representation of how I break down particle systems. So the first one here is the flying orb. Um, it's broken into three, it's broken into four phases actually. So like the start, the first movement, mid movement, and then final. Um, and that just determines the behavior of them at the time. But you can see this like inner image is one asset. This outer circle, number two, would be that second asset. The third one is this trail that uh, follows behind the first two, and then also the little wispy guys that follow that same trail behavior. Um, and that would be one that's just run off of emitters. This one would be something that's run off mostly meshes and materials. So you can see the bottom ring of this like outcast thing for one. Um, the second asset would be the magic decal that spawns on the floor. The third would be the orb, which itself would be a mesh. Um, you can link a particle system like this to a blueprint to even get specific of like add health points in this radius and set it to the radius of that orb. And then the fourth would be the orb material. And this is what Prismatica Dev means by 50% of particle systems is materials. 
because the orb's not doing anything special other than existing. The material is adding that magical effect that gives the illusion that it's something fancier. Um, and then same thing carrying over into the, the ice attack. The first asset would be the mesh that's spawning um, and just kind of like the textures that apply to it. Second part would be the bottom ring bits, um, like those chunk things. The third asset would be the fog, and then the fourth would be the snow that comes up out of the spawn point. Um, also a good resource is like our station. This is where I pulled all of these things from, just to kind of, again, see what people are already doing, and they usually show a little bit of that. So let's actually get into it now. I have my steps for this on the PowerPoint, which I can share with you guys afterwards. Let me open up Unreal or pull up Unreal. And you guys can still see this, correct? Yep, we can still see okay. perfect. Um, I'm gonna walk you guys through the systems and just give you like <laughs> a rundown of them, um, but we'll be making something that kind of kind of looks like this guy. I figured leaves and things like that would be a really good starting point um, and like easy to add into environments. So you're just gonna make a folder. And the first step is always to, of course, right click, and then you're going to click on this for particle system. This, again, is Cascade. Um, so, yeah, if you want Niagara, you'd have to like look up YouTube stuff for that. But for the naming conventions, I always put down P um, and then the name of what I'm trying to do. And then every particle system, again, needs material. So we're going to be doing right click and create material. And I name them usually like. PM for particle material, and then um, leaf mask, and then the name. Uh, it just makes it easier when like trying to search for stuff. But the first thing that we're going to open up is going to be this material. While this is selected, go over and hit translucent. Oh, not additive. You're gonna hit translucent. Um, and then I think particle systems can only run on like opaque or translucent materials. It's like one of the two, but you're gonna right click on the graph, do particle color, and you'll get a node that looks like this. Um, it's kind of the same as a texture node, but this particle color node references inside of the particle system itself. So when you change the color of that, it plugs it into the base color of the material and the emissive color. So it's uh, it's like the a parameter built into the system, basically. Um, and for the time being, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold three and right click to oh I'm gonna right click no hold on I'm trying to get a vector three. Hold on. There we go. I to do that I just press the three button and then click. So I'm gonna convert that to a parameter and name it color for the time being and set it to white. And then um, to get an opacity for this material, I'm gonna right click and grab a multiply node and plug the the gray dot, which is the particle alpha into the A. And then either this node here, um, it's better practice to use like one of the red, greens, or blues. And um, that's for when you replace this with a texture, it reads the grayscale map of that red to then apply it to the opacity, if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, I'm gonna save that. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna save that. And then now we're gonna open the particle system. So when I first opened this, it was like pretty overwhelming. Um, but once you get into the rhythm of like what is where and the kind of like the language that they're using, it's pretty, pretty nice. And like I said, it carries over into Niagara. So to break it down, this is what um, an emitter is. So you have required, uh, like these are all modules. Um, so we have required, which has things like 
your material, which we then can search for the material we just created and put that in there. It's gonna take a little bit to compile all the shaders, but we'll see that pop up hopefully soon. Um, but in here is just a bunch of options, you know, so like how many loops is it on? Is there a delay? Um, so if you want it to like start a little bit after, and a lot of the really good stuff. You can go into spawn, go up here and change how many come out. So I can do like five and it's a lot slower. Um, lifetime will change how long that they'll live. So as you can see, having it in like a float between like one and two varies how long they live, of course. <laughs> could change it to point five to have like a more dramatic difference. Um, but yeah, each of these nodes does something specific for the particles, and you can right click to get all types of new nodes. Um, YouTube is honestly the best source of information you can get for like making particle systems. Um, Cause it just can get, go a little bit more in depth of everything. And then people will often share like troubleshooting issues. So that's kind of like the basic lowdown of this menu. Do you guys have more specific questions about it? Um, I've been staring at it for a while, so it's a little bit more familiar to me. So if you have, if you saw something and you want to know a little bit more about it before I get into making the leaves, um, send it in the chat. But yeah, let me reset up for the leaves. So to get something like the effect of the leaves that we saw, hold on, that we saw here, having them come down slowly and kind of like fade out. Thankfully, the alpha over time is already set up when you open an emitter because one time it broke for me and I could not fix it for way too long. But um, is the curve editor for fixing the timing of particles? Yes, wait, hold on. Let me go to size. The curve editor? Oh, oh, down here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I haven't worked with it explicitly too much, but these distri distribution um, things will give you effects like that. That add a point. It's not popping up. But yeah, so it has it has a similar effect to the graphs. Um, it's like for a lot more precise detail and like what you want. That break that. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So to to make the petals go out, I added in. I right clicked under location. I added an initial location to spread it out over the base of like where the leaves would be, so it's not coming down from just one point. Since it's moving in X Y space, I'm gonna do. I think it was like 15 negative 15. So it goes 15 out from this point and then negative 15 out from that point. So it has like a base of like 30 basically. So again, 15 minus 15. It just spreads it out. So it has more surface area. Probably go actually to like 25. Make it more dramatic. And this, oh, this is actually what the tweaking process looks like like the polish phase is just over and over and over again, just going back through and tweaking. So that's a little bit more spread out. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change the velocity to just the negative of what it currently is and see how that works. That's pretty nice, nothing too crazy. It goes downwards. I'm gonna increase this to 20, negative 20. And this is initial velocity. Um, so this, sometimes the particle systems will choose uh, to either apply the effect on spawn or every frame. So initial velocity uh, determines the way the direction or the particle, it determines the direction of the particle on spawn. You would have to do like another node that would update it if you want to get like crazy turbulence in there. So I'm going to go into color over life now. And as you can see, there is 
two uh, points. This is where actually the curve editor would come in a little bit more to um, like blend them out. But distribution is set to vector curve constant. And because we used a, a particle color node, I can go in here and I can change it to like, I just did red, so let's do like, like a green and like a, like a lighter green yellow. Color is very fun. And that looks not too bad, kind of kind of like stylized, kind of cute, but it still has that square cutout. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go back into my material. I didn't save that before, so I'm gonna save it now. Um, but I'm gonna change this color out for a texture. So I already pre-made one. Um, it's basically the same process as the stuff that Daphne showed for uh, like her demo of the thing of the, the foliage, but it's just an alpha, like a black and white image. I don't even have the alpha baked out, which is why I'm gonna use the red color or the red channel to plug into the opacity. So this just masks it out since it is translucent. So it won't have anything too crazy. I'm gonna set that to two sided so I can see it on both sides. Save that again. And then now, when I go back into my system, it looks like leaves. If you really want to get crazy with it, there is a way to do like a sub UV, which is like you set up four alphas, like you would like a frame thing. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, it's not as scary as it sounds, but it's located down here in the, the required. But these are falling down, but they're all falling down straight. So I'm gonna right click again, and then go to rotation. I'm gonna do initial rotation. Um, and again, like the initial location or initial velocity, it determines the rotation on the spawn of the particle. And this honestly is not that bad. It's pretty simple, pretty plain, um, which is good. So I'm gonna save that. If you guys wanted to actually do this for like my petals and my grass, I went down into required and I went to, there's like a burst spawn. It's under spawn. There's a burst um, option and you can like choose. I can't remember if it's like increasing it or like decreasing it. You can mess with one of these to get them to come out like over time and like be a little bit more random. But our leaves are going to be continuous falling for this one. But you save that. And that's, that's pretty much the particle systems. Um, to get to here is when we go back to do blueprints. So I'm gonna pull this up. Oop. These are all the notes of um, the particle system stuff, but now into blueprints. Um, this is kind of like a really rough idea of what blueprints are. There is a lot more to what they can do and the code you can put into them. Um, but in their basic form, blueprints are visually scripted additions to your game. By connecting nodes, events, functions, and variables with wires, it is possible to create complex gameplay elements. Um, so I utilize blueprints to make the dams. So this is a mesh here, and that's a mesh there. But uh, these are also meshes with like fancy materials, but I was able to put the particle systems in and like line it up correctly so I just could place the whole dam at once. But now let's get into it. Hold on, let me exit out of that. So to create a blueprint, I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class and choose actor. For these, I usually name them something like BP for blueprint and then uh, like really cool tree, enter. Double click that. So to get the, to get like your mesh in there, you would just like, I just, oh, I like would drag and drop. I don't have a pre-made mesh for this. So I'm gonna go up to component and then cube. And I'm just gonna do trunk. And I'm gonna change the scale of this. So it's, oh, not that, it's really skinny. And then pull it up. And I'm honestly just gonna duplicate that and not even rename it and squish it. To be the top of my tree, the top of my hypothetical tree. If I was like Picasso and in hell, I feel like this is what my tree would look like. I hope you guys 
make a lot better one. But now that I have, sorry, now that I have that, um, compile, just for funsies, and then I'm gonna go to my folder with the material or the the system, and I'm gonna drag the the p underscore cool leaves over to the blueprint and place it in the default root scene. Um, sometimes like that, it'll parent to things. So if if it accidentally parents to an object, you can uh, drag it again and put on here to deparent it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. So it looks something like that. Oh, and compile and save. So that's the fancy little tree. And now when I want to place it, I just have to, oh, I just have to drag it out. And let's play. But yeah, there he is. I thought at some point you could make a blueprint actor a foliage brush. Um, when I tried to do that myself though, it didn't work. So I don't know if there is a more efficient way of placing particle systems inside of foliage, but usually if I make the area like wide enough for like grass to like cover from like there to there, it works pretty good, but for trees, I don't know a more efficient option. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> <laughs>